The sliding puzzle. Every puzzle game has one or two or three or is composed entirely of them. And Jules the Oracle is no different. Well, it's different in the fact that it's not composed entirely of them. We will have our first sliding puzzle momentarily. Just because this is a sliding puzzle doesn't mean it's going to be a brute force, just do it kind of thing. There are a few strategies that can be used to both make the puzzle easier and that can be used for actually solving sliding puzzles in general. Of course, there are some strategies very unique to this puzzle because this puzzle is actually a rather unique sliding puzzle. The Mask of Chaos is upon the seal of the Girzu Gates. Be as persistent as the tiny creatures beneath your feet. His introduction was certainly dramatic, but there really isn't any need to explain this. This puzzle is rather self-explanatory. It is a sliding puzzle. Yeah, we can move this piece around. We can even smash into other pieces and move multiple at once. Very convenient. And this side appears to have gravity. The images we need to make appear to be circles, made up of an edge piece for each cardinal direction and a corner piece for each intercardinal direction. Some pieces have multiple circle colors. This blue top has nothing above it, unlike some of the other pieces. That means it could go up here. And here is a green and red piece. This implies that the red must be below the green, so it would go lower. Each circle is three by three, but this side isn't nine heights, seven. But keep in mind that the top part of one circle is shared with the bottom part of another. We see a blue green one here. So if blue is on top, green is below, and here we see a red below green. Nothing above blue. But here's the green below blue, and here's the red below green. We now know the left side must be the three color circles in blue, green, red order. But what goes in this place? It must be the circle that shares nothing. There's only one other color we haven't touched, and that is this faded out yellow, I would say. As we can see, there is nothing above it, and also nothing below it, so it must go in this corner. Okay, puzzle mechanics. If we have a lot of spaces available, moving is easy. Otherwise, we will have to do this single sliding mechanic, which is quite annoying. Our goal should be to keep as many squares open as possible until the very end. Let's start by setting up the right side. Now, we don't want to complete the right side. If we complete the right side, we have to move all those pieces in that gravity stack above, outside of that section, because there isn't enough space to single slide them out otherwise if the corner is completed. That will eat up four of our five empty spaces, which will make solving the rest of this puzzle rather annoying. Instead, my goal is to set it up. What I intend to do is place the pieces that would make up the top of the yellow circle in that gravity tower in such an order that they can easily slide into place when they're ready. This allows me to take advantage of the extra spaces that will be available to solve the rest of the puzzle and have the right side in a ready to be solved state. And here I am just messing around trying to get these pieces through. I need to get the blue and the green-red pieces out.
Okay, now it is time to set up. I can place the pieces up here where I'm showing to prepare to move them down there. But I have to do this in the right order. Well, yeah, I'm actually one of the most important pieces. The top piece is still over here. Let me get it over here and then we can actually do this right. So since we know that the top piece must be the last one out of the stack, it there should be therefore should be the first one in. We can then fill it with corner pieces and finally choose another piece that's easily accessible. I'll go with the middle piece. Let's get all these other pieces in position. All right, let's go over this. The middle part comes out here, the corner goes here, this corner goes here, and then the top part comes down completes the circle. That's why the top part needs to come out last because otherwise nothing else would be able to get past it. Okay, we can worry about actually solving the right side later. The gravity stack is in position and the other pieces can be easily moved. But now, if we want to take advantage of the empty spaces, we need to fill the right side with something. Let's choose pieces in a way similar to how we chose pieces for the gravity stack. We know that the bottom circle is red, so let's stash some red pieces on the right side so we can do the same thing when we are at that point. Okay, we have some red pieces. Remember that the right side red must be the last to move because it will complete the circle, and the other pieces must be pieces that have no gaps in them respective to the others we are storing, so they all slide in perfectly. It'll be easier to demonstrate when I get there. Okay, we have so much space to work in, four to be exact. Let's start solving. Blue at the top. See how much easier it is to do a sliding puzzle when you have more than just one space available. Technically speaking, I could have put another piece in that little gap right now between the right and left sides and given even more spaces available. If I had done this again, I would do it over again like that, but it doesn't matter. We have plenty of space to work with already anyway. Look how nice this is. The blue corner can fit in easily. Imagine I didn't have four spaces to play with. Actually, let's imagine that. I would have to single slide, and I can't do that without messing up the top part. What I would have to do is bring them in together in such a way that the quarter goes first where the top should be, and then moves into position, also moving out of the way for the top part. But I have five spaces available and I'm apparently colorblind, that's green not blue. Let me move that out of the way. So because of that, this is so much easier. The earlier setup was instrumental. Okay, see how these slide in. The last one is the edge completing the circle. Now this is just beautiful. Last one is the top section completing the circle. Completing the ruby, grabbing the ruby. I hate sliding puzzles, but I must admit that one was pretty cool. That puzzle had some interesting mechanics in it that I think elevated it beyond just a regular sliding puzzle. It allowed you to think about it, to, to set it up so that if you do that right, the actual sliding is not annoying.
it's hard to believe, but this this is halfway done. We've solved half of the puzzles. Unfortunately, the next half are, let's just say, difficulty spike. The tasks resolved so far marked here are 12. 